the time has come, you can tell by the title, shit went down. So after this clip, I'm gonna include a couple clips that I took after the car broke. But uh, basically what happened, I was on the highway, I was heading to another city to do some racing, see some ladies, and uh, it was like maybe 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, someone wasn't even up yet. And I'm in the left lane, going to pass the semi. Um, cruise control was set at like 77. I just was on the throttle maybe 20, 30%. And then it felt like someone jumped on the brakes. Car locked up. You could see that the RPMs were, or something was, I don't know, it was weird. So I like clutched in, motor died, no brakes, no power brakes, no power steering. Had to yank it off to the left lane, like to the left uh, shoulder, which was, I mean, just, I barely got off the road. Like literally, I had maybe three inches from the line and then the uh, semis were just blowing by me, crazy. It was, I sat there for an hour and a half until a police officer came by and towed me to the other side of the road. Then I waited quite a while for a tow truck um, because my insurance told them I was at exit um, 277 when I was at 177, someone fat fingered the thing. So I waited forever and then I had uh, my roommate here, Eric, with the Camaro, get my truck, go run a U-Haul trailer, drive all the way out there, come get me, drive back, and we dropped off the trailer yesterday and I went and bought a trailer from Michael with the orange Evo. So now I have my own trailer and I'll be daily driving the truck from here on out. But what had happened was, I, I didn't even know what happened at first. No idea, I thought the motor blew, crank walk. That's, that's what I was thinking. But uh, sitting there on the side of the road, I couldn't really get out and look in the motor or the engine bay or anything because of all the semis driving by. Uh, you know, the highway's packed with semis that early in the morning. So, but I can start the car if I clutch in Start the car, I can rev the car just fine, it idles fine, acts totally fine with the clutch in, the clutch, you know, your clutch foot down, but, and it won't go with the car off or on. It goes into third easily and reverse easily. Fourth, you can yank it in there real hard, but one, two, five, and six, no bueno. Um, even in neutral, letting off the clutch, the car just stalls, and you can hear like a little tingy noise. Um, I put it in third gear, tried to rev it up real high, and let off the clutch, like ride it, and it just, it dies so um, something definitely failed I don't think I have a couple people tell me they think it's the clutch like the pressure plate or something failed but uh, I think it's something internal with the transmission and I'll be pulling you know I gotta pull the trans obviously because it's a transmission issue but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motor and the trans build both um, get a new clutch if I need to and then while I'm at it I might as well just start doing all my, my um, whatchamacallit rear end just ship still waiting on the, the hatch but um, I'm gonna pull the seats out, cut the carpet, move the PM4 to under the passenger seat on the floor there. Um, cut about, cut out like all the brackets and all the bullshit in the back half of the car that I'm never ever gonna use again because of the seats being gone and all that. Um, rear crash bar is going out, AC is going out, um, and any other little random shit that I can save weight along the way. We're gonna build the motor. Um, I don't know like what rated rods or pistons I'll get or anything. I don't really plan on making it anything over 600 ever. I mean, 500 foot pounds of torque and 550, 600 wheel, um, whether it's on this turbo or um, swatch out, swap out the exhaust housing for the XL and then just send it from there. Uh, maybe upgrade injectors. I'm gonna replace the direct injectors, redo the timing chains and guides, um, the thrust bearing on the crank, so at least that's refreshed. Uh, prevent quick walk for a while, hopefully at least, and uh, just do a bunch of shit. I don't have I don't have any idea on what pistons or rods or rings or any of that shit I'm gonna do yet. Or I think with the top end, I'm gonna you know pull the head obviously and maybe send that out to Precision Raceworks or uh, I forget the other company's name. I think they're in Texas too. They just came out with that real nice uh, fuel pump assembly. I think they do head work and build heads. So I want to send the head off somewhere, get ported. And you know, valves, valve springs, be able to rev this thing out to 77, 8,000 RPM. And then uh, the bottom end, I'm gonna do here or an Amarillo with my buddy Michael. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's the plan. I don't know where I exactly I wanna start because I know I gotta I got pull the seat, so I gotta have power to the car because the, the power seat, and I'm gonna have to move that back and forth. I also kinda wanna do a compression test just to see what it's like before I pull the motor, just to get an idea of. How healthy the motor is or isn't, you know, after beating on it for so. I thought the motor would go before the trans, honestly. So I'm a little surprised, but I'm glad it, the motor didn't, because at least I have like a good block and a good head to 
um, play off on. But the trans, I don't. Th there's no holes in the trans as far as I can see. It wasn't leaking any fluid, so uh, hopefully the housing, you know, the trans itself is good, and I just have to replace internals. I know a guy out in New Jersey. You guys probably know or heard of Billy Amberg, A2B Motorsport. Actually, he has a built trans as is with a couple dog gears. Um, I think he went 3,500 for it, so maybe I can contact him if that trains are still for sale. Just grab that, build the motor, and we'll be back on the road in like a month. Or, uh, I don't know, we'll just have to see. I'm going to start con It's a holiday weekend, so I'm going to start content contacting people on Tuesday, sending out some emails this weekend, and go from there. But I think right now, um, Eric just went and grabbed a compression tester from a buddy down here in the road. We might do a compression test just, just to see what the numbers are. Shits and giggles, then I'm going to probably uh, remove the seats so I can cut the carpet and reroute the PM4 and uh, if anybody knows anybody that wants a full set of seats front both fronts and the, the backs I'll even get rid of like the back door panels or something too I got the truck I literally be yeah, I will meet anybody anywhere in the United States meet me halfway um, I need that money to fund I got the Kirky seat here I want to buy kind of like a, like a Corbio or whatever the hell they're called for a passenger seat. Something a little bit nicer for when there's a passenger in the car, but it's still light and looks decent and be able to work with harnesses. Um, yeah, but go is that the motor out by the end of the week. I need, I need uh, a buddy, the other, same guy with the compression tester has an engine stand I can use, but I need to get rent or buy a cherry picker. And, uh, so just stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming up, be a lot of uh, in depth video and all that shit, but uh, I guess for now we'll pull out these plugs and coils, do a quick compression test, and see how she acts. Well, she's all up on jacks. Should have plenty of room here to play around. Um, what did I do here? I cut out some junk. I just cut out like this plastic bit right here. Um, might cut out more. I might just take out this whole panel, remove the airbags out of here, um, and wherever else I can remove things. But get the seat pushed back. I'll have to grab some tools here. Get these bolts out. We're gonna cut the carpet like right before this little hump. So when the seat's here, you still got carpet from the front. I want to keep like the front, minus the seats, the whole cockpit pretty nice. And I want to cut the uh, headliner from like, yeah, about the door across and back. Get rid of all that stuff. We'll see. I'm kind of upset. Like, this is sad. I really didn't want to pull the motor and everything till winter and build it, but I guess... The way things in life are going right now, it's better just to keep my mind occupied and stay busy right now. So it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. But uh, it's going to drain my bank account real bad. <laughs> like real, real bad. But I can just deploy again this winter, hopefully, and get all that money back. Now I don't have to funnel all the money into the car when I'm deployed because it wasn't paid off last time. So that's a lot of extra money I can just put in the savings and then buy a couple extra things like the front tubular subframe and uh, some aero stuff hopefully if I can get a spot this winter but uh, it's gonna be exciting let's get these seats out you guys I know anybody who wants these seats let's meet up soon I'm trying to get rid of them I need the money all right guys just got uh, both the seats out got the carpet cut how I want on this side now we're about to do the same thing on this side. Seats are real easy. They come out with four um, M10 triple squares. If it'll ever focus, probably won't, whatever. Um, I'm going to cut this carpet and I'm going to set the Kirky in here just to see how it looks. Um, don't worry. Everything's going to get vacuumed out and cleaned. I'm going to literally, like all these brackets and stuff, like this and this and these, like I showed you in the last video, all that's got to get cut out. And um, this is going to be a bunch of uh, metal shavings everywhere so eventually we'll we'll get it all cleaned up and good to go but for now we're getting this damn carpet out and then uh might start disconnecting some stuff on the motor i do want to do this compression test but uh i guess we'll see here how this is going to pan out there's a couple things i wanted done today and i was getting the seats out getting the carpet cut and, and out and maybe start cutting up some of these smaller brackets with the uh 
Dremel. And then I need to get some, some cutting wheel disc things to get the bigger ones off, so. It's gonna be a fun week. Fun couple weeks, fun month. I don't know how long this is gonna take. Man, it's hot. All right guys, I'm being bad about recording because I'm just kind of in the zone here and it's hot, but seats are out. Carpet is cut. I had to open up this box here. I think it's like where the body harness meets. As I said, it's real easy to take out. Just a couple screws, cut around that. Cut around around the back. You got my wires for my Haldex switch. I might, uh, might relocate the switch that's in there so I can do front wheel drive burnouts. Might move that to here and get these three empty slots. So I might do like uh, Haldex, something else, something else, I don't know. Maybe one where I can switch and it'll turn off all the ABS, power steering, all that shit. Um, just for shits and giggles, I don't know. Um, maybe do, if I do meth eventually, put another switch there for that or nitrous or something. I would like to put a little 50 shot in here for when we are doing street racing stuff, but uh, we'll see eventually. But for now, uh, threw the Kirky in there. My dumbass thought it would sit up by itself. I don't know why. But obviously I need brackets and stuff, but this thing will be pretty dope in here one day. We'll see. Uh, other than that, we just got the front bumper off. Boom. I'd like to get rid of this crash bar, but I'd have to like cut. It'd be a lot of cutting and shit. The rear one's definitely coming off, but uh, We'll get to that whenever we go to do the rear end stuff. But uh, with the bumper off, pulling out these wiper motors, uh, just a couple screws, and I just snapped them off. Uh, I never ever use them. I disabled them at like probably before even 10,000 miles. It's so dusty here, and when they they spray, they go all over the car, and then all the dust turns into like nasty fucking nasty. But here we are. This is the goal I wanted to get to today. Take the bumper off. Uh, get the seats out, cut the carpet. So we'll see what I wind up doing tomorrow. Probably I'm going to the lake. It's the holiday, Labor Day. So didn't really plan on getting too much done this weekend, but I really want this motor out by the end of the week. So tomorrow, if I can get like the intercooler and the AC condenser, I need to have someone come by actually and uh, drain the AC because I'm deleting all that, all the brackets, everything that goes with that, anything in the engine bay that has to do with that is gone. We're gonna cut all that stuff out. So. Just stay tuned. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Well, I hope you guys aren't uh, <clears throat> gonna be yelling at me too much <laughs> in the comment section. Uh, I apologize if any of this is making you cringe, but uh, just getting done what needs to get done. Um, a lot of the stuff in there. I mean, you know, if I'm never gonna use it, there's no point in having it. Get rid of it. Um, but today's well, the video went out today. The last one of doing some other weight reduction stuff. A lot of people were wondering what the seats weigh. So since I got the seats out and before I sell them, I'm gonna throw them here on the scale. I think I already got a guy out in California that's gonna buy them. I'm gonna have to toss all the stuff in the truck and, and drive out there. It's gonna, at least I got friends in like LA and San Diego. I might be able to spend a couple days out there and see LA and whatever. But shut out with the driver's seat, get that on the scale and see what she weighs. All right, I'm gonna just weigh myself here real quick because I don't want this to. I'm just gonna hold it. So we'll get on here. What do we got? 145.5. Get off. Reset. 145.5. Okay, ready? Get this reset once more. This thing is heavy. <clears throat> So it's 2064. Okay. Over time. Two oh six four. So what what I one forty five, so that's like sixty pounds. Alright, no go passenger, which really doesn't seem that much lighter, honestly. Two oh one, so about three pounds less. Yep, two oh one. So those together about 
120 pounds. It's quite a bit. Now, um, obviously this seat doesn't have rails yet or anything, but uh, just to give it a, a guess, 158 with the camera and this, so that's about 13 pounds, 15 pounds-ish. So, I mean this with rails, probably weigh about double that. So you're talking, I don't know, maybe 30 pounds, so half the weight. And we get two of these, we're saving 60 pounds, easy. It'd probably be less than that, so. And 60 pounds, that alone with the seats, would bring me down to, car weighs 3140 now, so it'd be, bring me down to uh, 3,000, what, 80? And with all the other shit out, the rear end, the hatch, the interior pieces, the AC, um, hatch, Lexan, um, crash bar in the back. I'm gonna save quite a bit of weight. I think we can get another 80, that 80 pounds out, so it can be under 3,000, which is the goal at the very least. Have it under 3,000 without me in it. Uh, it'd be great to be under 3,000. Well, camera died. Anyway, I was saying uh, it'd be really great to have it under 3,000 with me in it. Um, I don't know where we can get another 145 pounds out of the car, but uh, we'll see. We will see. Um, I'm going to be adding weight eventually with aero and uh, handbrake and uh, Lord knows what else, but I'm going to try and keep it under 3,000 pounds. And with the motor built, we're looking at easily 550 wheel and probably just a tad over 500 wheel torque. So it's going to be a good time. I think that power to weight is going to be fantastic. Um, that's going to be the end of this video. I think I'm going to start out the next video with just draining fluids and drain the trans, drain the motor and uh, start getting some accessories off. I want to get that, that front end. I want to get the intercooler and the AC condenser, all that off. Start cutting out some AC stuff. Um, can't do too much because when my buddy gets back, depending on when he gets back today, we're going to grab the engine stand. I still need to source a uh, cherry picker hoist thing. We had a cold front come in. Today's high is like 45. It's crazy. Like it's super windy. It's like 40 mile an hour winds. It's snowing up in Denver and Albuquerque. It's crazy. It's kind of cold out there. So I don't know how much I'm really going to get done because I hate the cold. I'd rather it be... I'd rather be out there sweating than freezing. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Look out for the next one. Uh, we'll be draining a few fluids, pulling some accessories, this, that, and the third, and then hopefully by two, three videos from now that you'll see next week. I'm hoping to have the motor out by this weekend. So, and then we can assess some damage. I'm gonna get a hold of Billy Amberg, try and get his built trans, has an LSD and dog gears, and this, that, and the third. So. That would be nice, and then we just gotta figure out what parts we want for internals, get them ordered, and uh, yeah. So, you guys got any suggestions on internals, more specifically uh, head head work? I would like to just pull the head and send it somewhere to get valves and valve springs imported. And uh, yeah, the bottom end I'd like to do myself at the very least, but um, porting I'm definitely not gonna do. Changing out valve springs is easy. That, that's, I mean, Valves and valve springs are pretty simple, but I'd like to have someone who knows what they're doing. And uh, closer to New Mexico, West Texas, the better. Um, Alright, yeah, that's all I got. Drop comments, questions down below, and I'll catch you on flip-flop.